Hello, this is the Dark Somnium. The intro music you hear in this video, as well as many of Dr. Creepin's other videos, is composed by me. If you'd like to hear more of my original music, you can do so over on my channel. Thank you for listening, and enjoy tonight's story. My name's Samantha, but people call me Sammy. Three months ago, I received this package from a beauty company called Blue Aphrodite. I run a popular makeup blog, and I'd never heard of this company before, so I was pretty intrigued when I got a package from them. Apparently they were testing out this new product, and they wanted me to sample it. <sighs> I was used to getting products from the cosmetic industry. I'd grown a large enough audience from my blog to garner attention. 3.6 million subs by my last count. I'd even been mentioned a couple of times in Vogue and Vanity Fair. I sat at the kitchen table and opened the package. I loved opening packages. It made me feel like it was my birthday. And I'd slow the process down. Trying to stretch it out. Trying to guess what was inside. Just like I used to when I was a kid. In this case, it was a well-designed box. Perfectly manicured with an image on the cover of a woman wearing what looked like a peel-off gel face mask. She looked like a burns victim hiding behind a recovery visor, and I frowned as I studied the box, turning it over and over in my hands as I tried to figure out what I was being offered. At last, I opened the box and peered inside. There was quite a sizable instruction manual, that offered me directions in five languages. I set the manual on the table, and then I drew out this large gel pack that came sealed in a vacuum pack. From what I could tell, it was a face shield patch, the kind that acts like a second skin you cover your face with, and then you apply your makeup to the face shield rather than to your naked skin. I demonstrated a couple of face shields in my videos, but I never really thought they worked out all that well. This one felt really strange, really lifelike, and touching it through the vacuum bag, I got the unsettling impression I was handling real flesh. It was just as pliable, just as smooth, and I was trying to figure out what it was made of, trying to compare it to anything I'd felt before, but it was pretty much incomparable. I just couldn't figure it out. I opened up the pack and ran the mask through my fingers. It was almost completely transparent. Oh, it felt exquisite. Like stroking silk right after doing your granddad's dirty laundry. But it also felt a bit creepy. A little too organic. And I quickly returned it to its pack and checked out the instructions. It was a shield you applied between your skin and your foundation. Something you basically got to wear like a synthetic face. But the makers boasted that this particular product was made of a cutting-edge hybrid plastic that would allow it to customize itself to the wearer's bone structure. I was pretty intrigued after reading that, so after a good deal of humming and hawing, I finally worked up the courage to try it on. I laid the mask out on my dresser before bending down and pressing my face into it just like the instructions told me to. And then, I sat up and held the mask against my skin, smoothing it out and making sure it covered every inch of flesh. Initially, it felt wet and half-formed. The inside cup, rough against my skin, was coarse. But after about a minute to about a minute and a half, it started to dry out. And then it became super smooth to the touch freaky almost. It actually felt like real flesh. Like as if someone had touched my face right then, they wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Well, I had to give credit where credit was due. This was by far the most advanced mask I'd ever come across. And I couldn't believe I'd never heard of the company that had produced it. About five minutes into wearing the mask, I felt it begin to constrict around my face. And staring into the mirror, I could see the gel actually sculpting itself. 
but cheeks becoming visibly more prominent, the nose growing smaller, more upturned, the lips fuller, the chin narrower. It was an amazing sensation. I can't fully describe it, but it felt intimate and mechanical all at the same time. I applied makeup over the mask, and it was like making up someone else's face. The contours were unfamiliar. The features were off. <laughs> it took me a while to get the hang of it, but after a full hour, I stood there staring into the mirror, and I couldn't believe what I saw. I looked beautiful. I looked better than beautiful. I looked like a model from the cover of some high-end celebrity magazine. Flawless skin. Gorgeous, sultry eyes. Perfect cheekbones. It was freakish. I was staring at myself, but I didn't recognize any part of what I saw. I had attained an order of perfection far above and beyond anything I ever could have dreamed of. Well, the first thing I wanted to do was go out, just to gauge the reaction I got. I couldn't wait. I dressed in a hurry, throwing on an old t-shirt and a pair of faded jeans, and then I hit the street, <laughs> and I swear to God, I was walking on air. Men were looking at me with naked hunger in their eyes, women with a mixture of envy and admiration. I couldn't believe how much attention I was getting. I felt like the most famous person on earth. I felt sexy as hell. My friends couldn't believe it either. Cindy laughed hysterically when she saw me. She thought I was someone else, and then she couldn't stop touching the mask, asking what it was made of and how long I could keep it on. Oh, and how much it cost, and where she could get one. And most of those questions I couldn't answer. It was a prototype, I told her. I was just testing it out. Many adopted a more cautious approach. Oh, she didn't like the mask. She couldn't put a finger on it, but she thought it robbed me of something. I don't know, she said. It's a bit creepy. Like, mannequin creepy. Oh, come on. You're saying I look like a mannequin. I was angry, but I refused to let her get me down. You look beautiful, Cindy chimed in. You don't look like a mannequin, Mandy was trying to explain. But the mask gives off that same creepy vibe. Look around, I invited her. Most of the guys in here don't seem to have a problem with it. I was right, of course. All the men in the bar were looking at me, or trying to pretend they weren't looking at me. I kind of felt Mandy was maybe a little jealous. She'd always tried to compete with me when we were kids. I got up. My round, I said with a humorless smile. Mandy reached out and touched my arm. I didn't mean it to sound like that, she said. Cindy's right. You look fucking beautiful, Sammy. I'm just... I don't know. I'm trying to adjust, I guess. I nodded, and my smile grew genuine. <laughs> you and me both, I said. I was at the bar when this guy came up to me. Uh... I was trying to think of something that didn't sound like a pickup line, he said. And all I could come up with was, Hi, I'm Jamie. I turned towards him, not really interested, but determined to be polite. But then all that shit went straight out of the window because, holy rolling Jesus, Jamie was drop dead gorgeous. He was in his mid-twenties, about six foot one, with chiseled catwalk features. And beneath his shirt, I figured he was hardcore ripped. I was literally swooning on the spot, but at the same time, I was trying to retain this air of casual detachment. Hi. I reached out to shake his offered hand. I'm Sammy. 
Didn't I meet you at Joe's party? I knew damn well I didn't meet him at Joe's party, because I didn't know anyone called Joe. But I wanted to sound like a socialite, like someone who got out way more often than I actually did. Uh, no. He snapped his fingers. Damn, I must have missed Joe's party. Joe's loss, I said, refusing to give him back his hand. We hit it off straight away. He was from Texas and he was up here working as a substitute teacher at a local high school. And all the while he was talking, I was staring into his Irish green eyes and trying not to fall in love. I invited him over to join us. and I could see the look on Mandy's face when I brought him back to our table. Like she knew he was out of my league, that the only reason he was interested in me was because of that mask I was wearing. I knew she was right, but I didn't care. I just wanted to pretend he liked me for me. Well, if only for that one night. Who the fuck cared about tomorrow? That night, I did something really strange. When I got home, I changed all my profile pics and put up pics of me wearing that mask. I didn't want anyone to know what I'd looked like before. I didn't want Jamie to know what I'd looked like. As far as I was concerned, this was me. This had always been me. After that, I started peeling the mask off. Just the way I'd remove my makeup before I went to bed. I had no intention of sleeping with it on. It felt horrible taking it off. The mask didn't want to come off. It was like it was forming an attachment to my face. And I felt the way you feel when you're coming down off a powerful high. Like the only thing I could think about was how to stay high. I was halfway through taking the mask off. And then I stopped and put it back on again. And it wrapped around my features like a favorite comfort blanket. So warm and snug, I actually felt a surge of pleasure, my whole face tingling with excitement. I began to wonder whether the mask was designed to release some kind of feel-good drug into the nervous system, like a tobacco patch. I washed the makeup off and stood staring at my reflection in the mirror. Without makeup, the mask was transparent barely discernible over my real face. It made me look a little synthetic, the way the plastic caught the light, but I didn't want to take it off. I felt too good with it on. So, I went to sleep with it still attached to my face. Gah, I had a really messed up dream that night. I was sitting at a table in a fancy restaurant, and all around me were sitting these men and women, and they were all movers and shakers, all of them connected to the entertainment industry, or the model industry, and all of them laughing and gushing over me like I was the best thing since sliced bread. I stared down at a bowl of porridge the waiter set before me. It didn't look very appetizing. Even in that dream, I knew I was someone else. I felt different. I felt cold and imperious. I felt as though I stood head and shoulders above everyone else. I hated everyone at that table. I knew they were just using me to get what they wanted. I was beautiful and they were in the business of making money off beautiful objects. They were parasites. They were the scum of the earth. And I was just an object to them. I woke up hating the whole world. I can't take the mask off. It's too fucking painful. It feels like I'm trying to peel my whole face off with a carving knife. I'm scared. Jesus Christ, what is this thing? It feels like it's attached to my nervous system somehow. I call up the number that came with the instruction manual, but it just rings and rings and no one picks up. I start looking up the company, Blue Aphrodite, on the internet, trying to find out more about them. 
but their website is a 404 page, and their name has suddenly dropped off the Google search engine. No one can wipe away their digital footprint that thoroughly, especially not in this day and age. Somebody must have heard of them. Someone must have done business with them, but despite knowing dozens of people in the industry, none of my contacts have ever heard of a company called Blue Aphrodite. I'm beginning to doubt they ever existed. I'm scared by the implications of this. Is this some kind of military experiment? Am I a guinea pig? I tear the packaging apart. I go over the book of instructions with a fine tooth comb, but I learn nothing new. The instructions come in five different languages besides English. Polish, Spanish, French, German, and Danish. Well, the illustrations look straightforward. How to apply the mask to your face. How to apply makeup to the mask. How to remove the mask each night before you go to sleep. Each night before you go to sleep. I'd never noticed that part of the manual before. I was pretty sure that part hadn't been in the book when I first got it. I'm quite diligent when it comes to things like that, and yet... I shook my head in bewilderment. And yet, here it was. It is essential that you remove the culture each night before you go to sleep. Failure to do so will result in germination. In which case, the culture will send millions of microfibers into the flesh of the host, creating a near irreversible bond between the two. I dropped the book in panic. What the fuck is a culture? Is that what I'm wearing? Some kind of culture? I'm trying to get the mask off. But it hurts so fucking much. It bleeds when I cut it. So I've stopped cutting it. Stopped hurting it. It's like trying to hurt my own face. It feels like my own face. I've spent hours sitting alone in the dark. I could go to a doctor and call an ambulance. But the truth is that well, despite everything. I still want this to be my face. The thought of going back to the way I looked before, quite frankly, sickens me. This mask makes people want me. The mask makes me feel special. What should I do? Has anyone heard of this company, Blue Aphrodite? Does anyone know what's happening to me? I'm getting in deeper with Jamie, and I still haven't told him about the mask. I can't lie to him, but I'm sure as hell not about to tell him the truth either. So, I simply failed to mention it. He's fun and smart, and he thinks I'm beautiful. Jamie is one of the good things about wearing this mask. I'm acutely aware that without this mask there would be no Jamie. <laughs> You're the best thing that's ever happened to me, he keeps telling me. He's talking to the mask, but I managed to convince myself he's talking to me. He has an ex-girlfriend who keeps turning up at his apartment, wanting to borrow stuff, or asking Jamie to help her out with the most trivial things. She makes it so fucking obvious she's trying to win him back. Her name is Rachel, and she looks at me with pure venom. She's jealous. She knows that so long as I'm around, she doesn't stand a chance. Jamie won't stop her from coming around. He's too nice a guy. He says Rachel's not altogether stable. That she's trying to work out a lot of shit that happened to her when she was a kid. It's too early in the day to take a stand on the issue, but I just wish she'd get hit by a car and die. I didn't notice, but the other day Mandy said that being around me just wasn't the same anymore, that I always sounded pissed off, and that I kept talking down to people, 
like everyone was beneath me or something. She said the mask was the worst thing that had ever happened to me. She doesn't know what the hell she's talking about. So I told her she was jealous because no one looked twice at her so long as she was around me. Mandy started screaming insults at me after that, telling me that the mask wasn't real and it was just hiding the ugly reality of who I really was. I don't think I've ever seen her so mad. Usually I walk away when people get loud and in my face, but all of a sudden I felt the mask tighten around my skull and a black rage went ripping through me. I literally wanted to tear the head from her shoulders. But instead, I just stood there and started yelling Mandy all this stuff about her that she thought no one else knew. She turned white. She stared at me and her mouth flew open and I thought she was going to pass out. I don't know how I knew so much stuff about her. Maybe I absorbed it subconsciously over the years, but it was all coming out of me now. And the more I talked, the whiter Mandy got, and the wider her eyes got. Suddenly, she hunched over and threw up on the sidewalk. I walked away from her, laughing spitefully as I went. Sooner or later, I'm going to have to choose between the old me and this new, powerful me. Everyone says I look familiar, like a movie star. Cindy keeps calling me up. She wants to hang out, but I'm actively avoiding her calls. The truth is, I'm a little embarrassed to be seen with Cindy. She's overweight and frumpy looking, and whereas she might have been good enough for the old me, the new me needs to be seen with the right kind of people. And the new me whispers in my head day and night. It's hungry. I feel it drying and shriveling and tightening around my face. And when I look in the mirror, I can see micro wrinkles beginning to form around the mouth and the eyes. And it's beginning to peel like an old snakeskin. I try to moisten it with water, but it continues to dry out. And I grow increasingly desperate. I pour through the instruction manual, trying to find out how long I have before the face mark dries up completely. How long I have before my face, quite literally, dies. Nothing. The answer isn't in the manual. The answer is in my dreams. Every night I've been having the same dream. The one where... I'm sitting at that restaurant table. But tonight the dream is different. Tonight I stare down at the porridge the waiter sets in front of me. And then slowly, quite deliberately, I pick up my fork and stab it down into the meal. The porridge begins to bleed. I wake up and the mask is insanely tight around my face. I feel like I can't breathe. I realize what the mask wants. It wants human blood. <laughs> no one's going to miss him. His name's Bagman, and for as long as anyone can remember, he's lived out in an abandoned foundry on the edge of town. Some people say his wife and children were all killed in a car accident. And after that, Bagman went mad. That's why he lives the way he does. Other folks think he committed a crime so terrible he could never forgive himself. Anyway, whatever the truth, he's lived at the foundry for years. And apart from the kids throwing stones at the building's windows from time to time, no one ever bothers him. I think he's like 70 or something. I take him some Chinese takeaway, but it's a while before I'm able to locate him. The foundry is huge and derelict and gloomy as hell. But at last I find Bagman crouched in the corner of some shit-stained refectory. 
<laughs> he's singing to himself. And he's collected all these old newspapers around him that he's attempting to piece together like they're all part of some enormous puzzle. He doesn't seem surprised to see me. I offer him the takeaway, and he starts devouring it greedily. He keeps saying, oh, God bless you, girl. He seems genuinely touched by my gesture. I'm glad he likes the food. It's the last meal he's ever going to have. I slip a monkey wrench out of my back, and while he's crouched over eating, I smash him repeatedly in the back of the skull. It's actually easier than I thought it would be. He's still alive, still twitching, when I cut his throat and bathe the mask in the warm blood that jets out of the wound. Oh, Jesus, I've never felt Anything so pleasurable in my life. <laughs> the mask is full with health. It feels just like it did when I first got it. <sighs> the hobo's blood soaked right into it, like water absorbed by a sponge. And now, looking in the mirror, I have to confess I am more beautiful than I could ever believe possible. I look like the kind of woman a man would abandon his family for. Mm, it gives me an enormous sense of well-being. But there is a price. In order to remain beautiful, I must feed the mask. Every ten days or so. If I neglect to do so, it dries up like a husk and will, I have no doubt, eventually fall off. That thought scares me worse than anything else. Just the other day, a guy walked up to me on the street. Oh, the way he looked at me. I thought he was going to try it on. But it turns out he was a photographer for one of the biggest modeling agencies in the country. I can't believe it. I can't fucking believe it. The agency signed me on the spot. I called mum and dad, and they were really excited for me. They wanted me to come over, but I made an excuse. I can't go and see my folks so long as I'm wearing this mask. I don't want to freak them out. My life is taking off in ways I can scarcely believe. I never want to go back to the way things were. Jamie wants me to move in with him, but I'm not ready for that just yet. It's easier to keep a secret if you're living on your own. Besides, there's always his ex to contend with. Last night she paid a visit at my apartment. Yes, the little bitch tracked me down with the tenacity of a woman scorned. And when I answered the door, there she was. Standing in the communal hallway with this creepy little smile on her face. What do you want? I demanded. I want you to stop seeing Jamie. She made it sound like the most obvious thing in the world. I stared at her incredulously, and very slowly I said, Are you out of your tiny mind? She stepped forward into my apartment, literally shoving me to one side. I know what you're up to, she said. I know what you really look like. She was smiling, and she had this evil glint in her eye. I stared at her. Oh, that's good, I said. But I don't know what you're talking about, Rachel. So, could you please, you know, get the fuck out of my house? She held up a photo. I know what you looked like before, she giggled. I stared at the photo. It was a picture of me taken about two months ago. I was goofing around with Cindy and Mandy at the time, and Mandy's boyfriend, Eric, had snapped the shot on his phone. Where did you get that from? I demanded. She shrugged. <laughs> Does it matter? I tried to bluff my way out of the corner she painted me into. That's not me, I said casually. 
I don't know why you think that's me. Your friend Mandy seems to think it's you, Rachel purred. And I bet Jamie will think it's you as well. I bet he's going to be so freaking mad you didn't mention you were wearing... What did Mandy call it? A mask? Every woman wears a mask. It's called makeup. I shrugged. It's kind of the done thing. Rachel shook her head. This is a little bit more than foundation and a dash of lipstick, she said. <laughs> no pun intended, Sammy. But let's face it, you're a fake. I must have grayed out. The next thing I remember, I was on top of Rachel with my hands wrapped around her throat, squeezing as hard as I could, and I was screaming at her in a language I didn't recognize. She was blue in the face, her eyes bulging. And I might have let her go, but she was clawing at my eyes and face, so I slammed the heel of my hand to the bridge of her nose, again and again, until her entire face was a mask of blood, and she started gurgling and flopping around beneath me like a beached fish. I dragged her into the bathroom and left her on the floor, whilst I checked my face in the mirror. Oh, the damage was extensive. The bitch had sunk her nails into my cheeks and clawed all the way down to my chin. The skin was hanging in flaps and blood was pulsing through the wounds. I made an animal sound at the back of my throat. She'd ruined my looks. I stormed into the kitchen, grabbed a carving knife, and returning to the bathroom, cut Rachel's throat from ear to ear, leaning over and literally washing my face in her blood. The mask soaked it all up, filling me with black waves of pleasure, and I was literally sobbing with the intensity of it. Images flashed in my head that I couldn't connect to my own life. Rivers of blood flowing, bodies lying sprawled and twitching. Their faces peeled from their skulls, and I'm speaking Russian, Danish, Hebrew, Tamil, words spewing from my mouth in a relentless torrent. Sitting on the bathroom floor, I'm rubbing my face in blood and laughing hysterically, and I'm not me. I'm someone else. I don't know how to explain it, but... But I can see the faces of parents I've never had, lovers I've never met, friends I don't have, living in a city I've never been to. <laughs> and I can't stop laughing. Mandy betrayed me to Rachel, gave her my photo, told her where I live. Mandy's a fucking bitch. I think I'll drink her blood next. But first, I have to get rid of Rachel's body. I've done it before. I've done it countless times down through the long centuries. And no doubt I'll do it countless times in the future. Is the mask some kind of life form? A parasite that's been transferring itself from one girl to the next since time immemorial? It constitutes... A second me, a monster that is slowly taking me over, and day by day, it's getting stronger. I am the host, a puppet, and the mask must feed. Thanks for taking the time to drop by and watch this video. You know what would make me a happy doctor? Hitting that like button, 
leaving a comment, and subscribing to my channel. Go on, I've got plenty more stories to tell you. <laughs>